In today's lecture, we will talk about the adrenergic antagonists, also known as adrenergic receptor blockers or sympathomatics. So what are the adrenergic antagonists? These are the drugs that will block the adrenergic receptors. These are the receptors on which the adrenaline nor adrenaline will bind and then they will show their action. And you know about the adrenaline nor adrenaline. Epinephrine is adrenaline and norepinephrine is noradrenaline. So the adrenergic receptors present in our body are the alpha and beta, which are further divided into alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, 2 and 3. And in our this lecture, we will just increase our discussion to the subtype of the alpha, that is alpha 1a, alpha 1b. And before we move to the complex uh, explanation of the pharmacology, we must know the receptor location. And these receptors are located throughout the body, but in our this lecture, according to this pharmacology, we will study just some of the organs, okay? So, coming to the alpha, alpha 1A, 1B. 1A, these receptors are located in the sphincter, and 1B, they are located in the blood vessels. And alpha 2, they are present in the presynaptic neuron, and beta 1 present on the heart, beta 2, in the lungs, we have bronchioles and they are present in the bronchioles. And beta 3, I have not mentioned here. Uh, by the way, I will tell you that these are present in the adipose tissues. So this is the location. And now if we uh, stimulate these receptors, then what will happen? All stimulation, the very thing that you people must know is that this is a very common understanding, alpha 1, beta 1. If we stimulate these receptors, they will give the stimulatory action to the organ and then the organ will undergo the process of contraction means contraction will happen and if we stimulate the beta 2 and alpha 2 receptors they will give inhibitory signal to the organ and the organ will do some have relaxation some of the organs and their functions may be different in some other organs also by the way according to this lecture you must remember if you stimulate alpha 1 beta 1 they will cause stimulatory effect that effect will be some half contraction and if you stimulate beta 2 and alpha 2 they will cause inhibitory effect in a sense of relaxation well now uh, come to the point if we stimulate alpha 1b receptor which are present on the smooth muscles of the blood vessels which will cause the contraction so now these are alpha 1 receptors if we stimulate alpha they will cause the contraction so blood vessels will contract and this contraction will cause increase in the blood pressure and here we have alpha 1a now again it is alpha if we stimulate it, it will cause a contraction of the sphincter and you know when the sphincter is contracted what will happen then the urine will retain in the bladder the urination process will decrease so you can say urinary retention will happen and next one is beta 1 beta 1 again it is a stimulatory action if it is stimulated it will cause the increase in function of the heart like cardiac output heart rate etc means hertz function will increase and the next one we are having the beta 2 and alpha 2 alpha 2 if we stimulate the alpha 2 receptor they will give the signal to the neuron here in the neuron we have neurotransmitters it will give the signal not to release the neurotransmitter because it is inhibitory in action and the next one we have is beta 2 beta 2 are present in the bronchioles so when they are stimulated they will cause inhibitory effect and that inhibitory effect on the bronchioles will be bronchodilation now let's uh, have a, a short view of, of all the receptors here if we stimulate alpha 1b receptors present on the blood vessels they will cause the contraction of the blood vessels and increased in blood pressure will happen the next one we have alpha 1a when they are stimulated they will cause the contraction of the sphincter and urinary retention will happen and if we stimulate alpha 2 they will give inhibitory signal which will decrease the release of norepinephrine from the presynaptic neuron into the synapses and if we stimulate beta 1 receptor, they will cause the increase in heart function. And if we increase the beta 2 receptor, they will cause the bronchodilation. Now let's move towards the point that is the receptors blockade. If we block these receptors by means of the drugs adrenergic antagonist, what will happen? The function will just become opposite. Before it was supposed to contract, now they will dilate. And before it was increasing the blood pressure, now they will decrease. And here, before uh, it was causing the urinary retention due to sphincter contraction now urination will happen because we have blocked and here what was supposed to happen decrease in the release of norepinephrine now due to our blockade drugs there will be increase in the release of the norepinephrine and here the heart functions were stimulated were increased and now due to our blockade drugs it will decrease 
and here what was happening beta 2 receptors when they were stimulated they were causing the bronchodilation now when we block these they will cause the bronchoconstriction now it's going to be very simple for us to understand the pharmacology so in the pharmacology we will study about the blockade the drugs which will block these alpha and beta receptors and we classify the drugs into alpha 1 selective alpha 2 selective and alpha 1 alpha 2 non-selective and the same phenomena goes for the beta blockers so alpha 1 selective example of the drugs are the prazosin trazosin etc all those drugs having uh, end up with a sin o sin or sin these drugs will direct the alpha 1 b type receptors and they also have somehow actions on the alpha 1 a for that reason this will treat two diseases you know for 1 b and alpha 1 a it was supposed to cause urinary retention and when we take these medications prazosin Docins, etc. These drugs will help us in treating the hypertension and benign prostatic hyperplasia. And the next one we have is Tamsulosin, which is alpha 1A selective. Now our prazosin, trazosin, etc. drugs, they were having the actions on the alpha 1B and somehow on the 1A also. But this Tamsulosin, they are specifically uh, selective for the alpha 1A. So alpha 1A are present on the sphincter. And like this, these uh, Tamsulosin are specific for treating the benign prostatic hyperplasia. And uh, the next one we have is alpha 2, which is Yohimbin. Now, this Yohimbin drug is uh, actually used for research purposes. And in the ancient time, these were actually used for the uh, sexual dysfunctions like erectile dysfunction. So, nowadays, it is just used for the sake of uh, research. And the next one we have is non-selective alpha 1, alpha 2 blockers. They will block non-selectively alpha 1 also and alpha 2 also. And we have uh, two types of drugs, irreversible and reversible. You know by the name reversible these are the reversible they will block reversibly the receptors and these will block irreversibly so like this our phenoxybenzamine will irreversibly bind to the alpha 1 and alpha 2 then what will happen if the organ again wants to receive the stimulation then that organ is supposed to form some other receptors because now these receptors have lost their function because of the phenoxybenzamine they are binding to uh, this receptor irreversibly and the next one we have is phentolamine this binds to the alpha 1 alpha 2 reversibly means if you increase some other drugs concentration then then phentolamine's function can be decreased and the very interesting point about these drugs is that our phentolamine and phenoxybenzamine these both are used for treating the pheochromocytoma which is the a tumor of adrenal medulla in which adrenal medulla is releasing an increased concentration of the epinephrine or epinephrine. So these both the drugs are used for treating the pheochromocytoma uh, tumor. And the very point that makes these two different is the half-life. Uh, this uh, his half-life can go from 12 to 48 hours. And whereas phentolamine, it just lasts for about 4 to uh, 7 hours somehow, which is very less as compared to phenoxybenzamine. And the next one we have is the beta blockers. The very first one, beta 1 selective which is well known by the cardio selective means they are selectively blocking the beta 1 receptors present on the heart so uh, examples are the atenolol metoprolol asmolol and etc these drugs are very effective in uh, treating the hypertension and this drug is much preferred than other beta blockers in case when there is a patient having hypertension with the impaired pulmonary functions so when a person comes with copd and hypertension for that disease for that case we prefer the cardio selective beta 1 selective blockers because they will act only on the beta uh, receptors present on the heart and we don't need any kind of effect in COPD patient on the beta 2 receptors why because if the beta blockers show the action on the beta 2 you got the concept when we block the beta 2 receptor what will happen beta 2 was supposed to cause the bronchodilation if you block then the bronchoconstriction will happen and in the COPD we don't need the bronchoconstriction it means in the patient of asthma or COPD patients in that we don't need the bronco constriction so for that patient when a person is having hypertension and impure pulmonary function we actually prefer this beta 1 selective also known as cardio selective drugs and the next one we have beta 2 selective is butoxamine and this is actually again uh, the research drug it has no clinical use just like yohimbin which is alpha 2 selective these both beta 2 alpha 2 they are research used drugs the next one is beta 1 beta 2 non-selective example propranolol alopranolol and timorol etc the very drug that is propranolol it has got very interesting functions for the treatment of the hypertension glaucoma and cardiac diseases and this drug is not given when the person is having the complications of the pulmonary disease 
or you can say asthma or COPD. In that case, we don't give propranolol. For the rest of the complications like hypertension, glaucoma, and uh, rest of the cardiac diseases, this propranolol has got a very interesting function. And but the very thing that we must keep in mind is that if the patient is not having the pulmonary complications, in that case, this is the very interesting drug, propranolol. The next one we have is uh, a very different type in which these drugs are blocking both the alpha and beta receptors. These drugs are used uh, for the treatment of hypertension and cardiac diseases. And the very interesting function of the carbidolol is that this drug is reducing cardiac mortality. And in a nutshell, we can say that labritolol, carbidolol, these both drugs are used for treating the hypertension and uh, cardiac failure. And the mechanism of action that they are going to act on the beta-1 and beta-2 receptors is very interesting because of its structure. Labritolol, carbidolol has got four isomers, four isomers. Suppose here are the four isomers. Two here and two here, four isomers. These two isomers of the carvedilol, labritolol will bind to the receptor and the remaining two, they will block the receptor. So like this, they are showing the adrenergic antagonistic actions and uh, they are helping us in treating the hypertension in cardiac failure. So that's it a little bit from my side about the adrenergic antagonist or adrenergic receptor blockers, sympatholytics. If still you have any kind of question, you can drop that in the comment box. We'll come for the answers very soon. Thank you for watching.